Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Sunday. I forgot to do a how to base on Friday, so I'm doing a how to base. Um, this is part one, which means I just finished recording part two. I recorded part two first because I made this from scratch. It took me kind of a while, so this is going to be a long video. But this is part one where I'm really just going to go over the basics and um, or at least the, the direct what I did to make the sound. And then uh, if you're curious about more of the specifics, you can go to part two where I actually made it from scratch. So that's kind of neat. Um, anyway. This is what the finished sound sounds like. Good times. So that, this, this was a resample, but before we got the resampling, we made this. This was using a lot of familiar techniques with stuff that I've talked about in the past. I just kind of put them all together to make a sound because, again, I forgot to do one on Friday. I didn't really have one in mind, so I decided I would just make one from scratch to see what happened. So let's talk about what I'm doing in this particular thing. So before, there's actually two layers of EQ modulation. Both EQs are a bandpass and a notch. So the first sound, before we even got there, was this. <laughs> This is a citrus. What we've got here is an oscillator, an operator, FMing the output. This is the shape that I made. It's engaged with the harmonics. It's a triangle. It's also set to 0 0 0.2510. All of them are 0.25 by default. 0.2510 for this guy just to be a bit different in terms of uh, pitch movement. That oscillator is being ring modulated by this shape, which you got by doing even in half up here. And then this oscillator is being RM'd by this guy, which is creating the Reese movement. That's what that is. So uh, the output oscillator has a, has a little bit of effect on it. This is all totally default. I didn't mess with this at all. It's just there. Try it a little bit just to give sort of some space. And that is going into this equalizer, which is a band pass and a notch. That's these first two automation clips up here, which is going into a maximus to even out the low ends and the low and the high end and the bits and all that stuff so that they're all consistent. Then it's being this uh, chorus to add more sort of width and the uh, cutoff, the chorus cutoff is being um, automated by this guy here. This is the high frequency mode, which is the default, and this means that when it's all the way up, it's less on, and then when it's all the way down, it's chorusing lower frequencies. I set the delay and the depth a bit low, the stereo a bit on, because I want to create wideness with it's being distorted with a pretty standard wave shaper setting, and then it's being EQ modulated again. In addition to having a bandpass and a notch, I also sort of did some minor EQing. Which might think it's weird when you know, we have a bandpass set up, but actually when the bandpass goes in through these things, um, even without the notch present, it actually is affected by them. So you can still do regular EQ with an EQ that you're modulating, which is kind of nice. That's being distorted first and then maximized. To ensure continuity of bass. You didn't really have to do that, like I like doing it, but if you want, you can do like your regular sort of like low end reinforcement. Like you could have a separate output, you could EQ it to be just a low, and then have that go out. And so instead of you know crushing the output of the distortion, you can actually do that. But I like kind of like the single path I got going on here. I dig that. So that's being that's being recorded to Edison, which I have here, and it's dropped into the first harmer. Now I've loaded both A and B, um, this so that. Uh, B is set to be the side frequencies and A is the mid frequencies. So that means I have mid and side control over A and B, and that's how you do stereo uh, resampling. I'm hearing a ringing. So that's this first step here. Now, this guy, I'm automating some things, I'm automating the sharpness. I don't have any symbols in here. Ah, Arizona. I have things that are resonating. I, sh I really shouldn't, but I do. Anyway, um, 
I'm automating the sharpness knobs over here, A and B, and I'm also automating the, the unison, as you can see, very low values for the unison automation. And the sharpness automated clips, I've I set the mid the mid setting the min the min the minimum setting to be fifty percent. That's because the sharpness knobs are a one hundred to negative one hundred, and this the the negative setting the negative area of it is a different a different kind of sharpness setting, and I wanted to keep it in the main setting, so that's why I did that. <laughs> I automated the A and B portions of these settings independently to create kind of a, an interesting variation mix in the stereo field. And then I recorded that. And then I said, and then I put it into a third harmer. Second harmer, because the first one was a citrus. This is, again, A and B dropped. So we got mid and side. Uh, I've also set them all to be high precision in the image we set this is, which means that it uses double the amount of um, harmonics, or maybe not double. It's one extra octave worth of harmonics. Um, and then perfect because I like it doing that in D-Noise and that, that good times. And the side button is what turns on the mid-side setting. And that's what I did in this guy too. Um, I went for three voices on B instead of just the two voices that I have on, on A. I like two voices in general. Um, I kind of decided the way I like it. And I also mess around with the harmonic use and pitch for both A and B. They're kind of different. And then I also messed with the image format mutation, which is the same between A and B. That's what's on. And if I turn them off... And then if I turn them on, so that's, the, that's pretty much the change that it does. That's pretty neat. And then like the other harmer, I have the distortion engaged and some compression and the unison spreading and panning and that good stuff. And this is pretty much the end. Um, also, I EQ'd it in post a little bit. <laughs> Typically, these sounds tend to need some kind of like EQing or like you know shaping of some kind it's almost guaranteed not to fit with whatever you have in a track that you're working with um but like i do with most resampling i don't use the whole phrase all at once i cut up bits that are interesting and cool and i kind of just spread them out in the track to be very interesting sort of tidbits but that's pretty much it so to recap original sound actually i guess if i wanted to be super duper about it original sound there's a way to dis disconnect. I want to disconnect all. I just want to disconnect that. Yeah, okay. And then EQ modulated. The first time is this guy. EQ modulated a second time. It's this guy. That's what these two automation clips are down here. Then resampled. Resampled again. That's that. Um, if you have any questions, go watch part two because I made all of this from scratch. And, I mean, you can still ask me questions and I'll probably answer them by saying go and watch part two. But, Bearing that in mind, remember to, as usual, have a nice day. Oh, um, hi, XSplit. Um, my EP is out in nine days, March 18th. It's going to be very good. Um, if you would like, you can go to pre-order this EP. There's a link in the description. It's fixedstore.com slash seamless. There are previews for the tracks in there, too, for all of them. Um, there's actually going to be another preview coming out pretty soon. A nice video sort of thing. It's kind of neat. It's going to go up. It's going to be nice. Um, but you can pre-order it or you can wait till the 18th. It'll be available everywhere. If you have any questions about that, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.